All right, you guys, welcome, welcome, welkom to the Dimitri K Show. I am Donovan Sadiq. I am sitting in for Dimitri K. As her and executive producer Al Jackson are working out some terms and limits and contracts and all that other stuff as uh, imminently Demetria will be moving her show to Houston, Texas. So we want to congratulate her on that. A lot of stuff going on. If you guys haven't uh, seen the show before, uh, we are on Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, you name the platform. We're on it, YouTube. Facebook, Facebook Live, and you can also tune into Demetra K show every Sunday, specific stand, Pacific, he's saying Pacific, Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Uh, Los Angeles time, wherever you want to call it. On Facebook Live, Demetra will be interacting with you and talking with you if you got comments, likes, and concerns, whatever is going on. But if you're joining the show for the first time and you're watching on YouTube, please click that like button down there as uh, Demetria gets a lot of uh, feedback and she has a lot of people that follow her and doing a lot of stuff. I am your host today, Donovan Sadiq. I am one of the producers of the Demetria K Show. And again, I've known Demetria for over 30 years and this is something that we like to do. And I want to be the first to say on record, I discovered her. So... When you, see, when you see a diamond, you don't just walk by, you go ahead and pick it up. And uh, she's dropped a lot of knowledge, a lot of things happening uh, in uh, the world today that she's giving a different perspective. So today, we want to talk about, um, well, but before we get into that, also thank you to Marcus Guyton, who does a lot of the bells and the whistles behind the scenes. And we thank him for all that he does. And if you guys get a chance right now, what you're seeing, what you're actually seeing and hearing is our podcast. So we are on a bunch of platforms. You can't miss us. If you're sitting in that L.A. traffic, Atlanta traffic, New York traffic, Houston traffic, wherever you're at. Hey, you're sitting in a, in a, a parking lot anyway. Just go ahead and, and tune on and maybe we could uh, exchange ideas and maybe hopefully open your mind to uh, some different ideas of what's going on, especially in things that affect the black community. We are not people of color. We specifically are black and we need an agenda that's going to address our issues. So a lot of stuff going on today. Uh, we're going to talk about um, the artist known as Lizzo, 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 whatever, whatever's going on. Okay, um, Lizzo, for those that don't know, she's an American singer, rapper. I mean, the woman can do it all. You really can't take a lot from her as this woman is phenomenal. But if a lot of you guys have heard, this woman has shown her ass up at Staples Center, which was you know, very shocking to me because those of us that live out here in California, Staples Center has a very strict dress code. Well, it's not strict, but it's very regimented. You try to go in there with some khakis, some Chuck Taylors, and a t-shirt and see what happens to you at Staples Center. So for them to let this woman come in with a t-shirt with her ass hanging out I'm not sure exactly how that was acceptable, um, but you know we're we're, we're going to get into it. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about her for those that don't know a lot about her. I, you know, just heard about her. Uh, she, uh, from what I do know about her, she was not a protege of Prince, but uh, P Prince kind of mentored her in her career and kind of got her some some different places. But it says her real name is Melissa Vivian Jefferson. I love the name Vivian, by the way. Known profession as Lizzo, is an American singer, rapper, and songwriter. She's, she was born in Detroit, Michigan. She, she moved to Houston, Texas, where she began performing, before moving again to Minneapolis, thus the Prince Connection, where she began her career as a recording artist. So uh, this, this woman has been around <coughs> for a very, very long time. She is basically right now, from what I understand, on top of the game, even though I don't listen to that music. And uh, she's doing very, very well for herself. Now, as you guys know, there is a movement called One Million Black Men Against Demetra K. I myself am a member. No, I'm just, well, I am a member, but you know, you know what I mean. We, we, we do that because Demetra is, is trying to enlighten all you uh, black women out there and also women of color, if you happen to be that. And, you know, and, you know, and keep that positivity because even though it's a million men against Demetra K., I will bring out something and I would say, well, what about this, 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 and this? And, and, and Demetra would say... Where are the fathers? And it totally counterbalances my uh, my thought 
and it, it, it's just kind of uh, thought provoking and it brings uh, different things. So you guys have seen the video. She's at the Laker game and they, they I guess, play her song and, um, you know, she gets up and, you know, to me, I think this was all staged. It's all about getting likes. I guess a couple of days ago, she was the number one um, news item or Twitter item or something on the internet because, you know, she showed her big fat ass, okay? Now, uh, you know, I, I like thick women. I don't like fat women. There's a big difference. If you got curves, you've got curves. You, I mean, you're the, what I would like. But, um, you know, it just makes no sense to me how you could be a entertainer. You are on top of your game and yet you do the most ratchetiest things that you do to get attention. You know, um, there's a saying by a, a good friend of mine, Tommy Sotomayor. He says black women are not just black women, but especially black women are in need of DNA, dick and attention. That's their biggest thing. And um, it made no sense. You're sitting at $5,000, $10,000 courtside seats at a Laker event where there are family members and it's a family event. You've got children there and people who, are, who come to see a Laker game. And they played her song and she gets up and she starts twerking. And that wasn't a dress she was wearing. If those of you guys that know, you know fashion, you can look at it and obviously see it was a shirt. So she goes up there and she twerks her fat ass to her own song and you see her in the thong and stuff. And then I guess what she didn't anticipate was the backlash. Now, uh, big ups to, to Lizzo for um, representing big women. I mean, you know, uh, you know, and this is not about body shaming and things like that. You know, if you can't love yourself first, who's, you know, who's supposed to love you? So, uh, you know, big up for her for, you know, doing that empowerment movement to tell big women or fat women or grossly fat women, uh, delusional big fat women uh, that uh, they're beautiful. You know, but, you know, if you're 411 and you're weighing 480 pounds, I kind of have to question that thing. But you should love yourself regardless because we are all different, differently made. We're not all supposed to be the same. So, you know, she represents for black women. And I guess the reaction that she was expecting wasn't what she expected. Because you got to remember, it's not going to be the millennials that is going to be writing those checks, Lizzo. It's going to be people like myself and people that have been in the game for years. You never saw Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin's a big girl. Aretha Franklin is a big girl. But everybody wants to party with Aretha when she sings. Nobody cares. About Luther, that was a big man. But everybody wanted to party with Luther when he started singing. I mean, come on. So she didn't get the reaction I guess she expected. And... Um, the backlash was severe and quick, and I guess her PR people went to work and tried to, you know, throw it out as, you know, she's just being herself and being who she is, and, you know, you know she doesn't care about what people think. I think you do when it affects your coin. You, at least you should when it affects your coin, Lizzo. But who am I, who am I to say what is standard and what's not? I mean, you know, dress like you, you, you want to express yourself. I'm all for that. 24 years in the uh, military, that is what I uh, put my life on the line for you to do. Express yourself. But there are uniform standards. Now, you don't think you did anything wrong, but do you think I want my son seeing, seeing that? You know, I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense. And then they try to say that what's the difference between what Lizzo does and what the Laker girls do? Well, the Laker girls aren't wearing thongs and they ain't got their ass cut out in the back and twerking. Okay, that's something that I don't think at a family event people should see. Now, if we were at a Lizzo concert and that's what she wants to do, that's her concert. She should be uh, doing that, but totally unnecessary. And, you know, the sad thing is the next day on The View, Whoopi Goldberg and a few of the uh, ladies on there, Megan McCain, they were co-signing on, you know, what she did. Like, hey, she's expressing herself. It's okay. It's no big deal. What's the big deal? Okay, you've got people out there that want to express themselves too. Is it okay if I just walk naked down the street? Well, you guys would be scared. It's not Halloween. So, 
or better, better yet, not Halloween, it's not uh, April Fool's, so you won't be laughing. But anyway, is that acceptable behavior? I'm just expressing myself. Is it okay if somebody else uh, puts on a thong and walks into a church somewhere with nothing at the top? They're expressing themselves. There's got to be a uniform standard. And, you know, it's just crazy how these other women, I mean, that is almost indefensible to try to defend that. And, um, hey, if that's how you roll, that's how you roll. But there's a time and a place for everything. And again, the backlash is very severe. Don't do what you did because obviously there's a video of you coming into Staples Center and you didn't give a damn. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to express myself. I'm going to do what I got to do. You know, blah, 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 blah. A planned event. It didn't go the way, way you wanted to go. How do you expect people to respect you as an artist or as, even as a person and you don't even respect the people who might possibly buy your music? Lizzo, if you had a child and a bunch of men are running around with their, their D's just flapping in the wind, would that be acceptable to you? They're just expressing themselves like you. But your attitude is, I don't give a fuck. It's all about me, blah, blah, blah. Lizzo, please take some advice. That kind of attitude should be kept behind closed doors. You're a public figure now. You're on top of the game. And what's going to happen is you are going to end up in an, Anto in an Antonio Brown situation where you are going to uh, basically move your ass right out of your industry. And the only people that are going to take you seriously are the very ratchet street urchins that you try to appeal to. Come on now. You, uh, you know, I honestly believe you, you can do better than that. You're a beautiful uh, young lady. You know, nobody wanted to see that. Not there. You know what I mean? Just, just not there. So, uh, you know, Lizzo, you, you got to do better. And, you know, to then go back and defend it, that is almost the indefensible. And, and then now you're upset because maybe the powers that be are upset. And now your coin's being affected. But you got to think about stuff like that before you do it. You know, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's just, you, you need somebody on your PR team. That, that, that wasn't the move to do because as you get older and your music starts changing and the music does change, uh, you know, if you want to stay relevant, that's not the way to do it. And, you know, for those guys, I wish Demetra was here today so we can have a, a debate on this is what we're talking about. Why is the ratchet behavior, why are you signing on to ratchet behavior so that all the networks, all the people out there, white people and everybody else that is not black, say, see, see, they all do it. They're all ratchet. All black women are whores. Look, look at them. Look, look at them. You know, hey, you know, I know you, don't, you didn't sign up to be a role model, but to, to a lot of these young girls, you are, you know, so... Better decision making in the future, I would hope, from uh, Miss Lizzo. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, again, uh, this is Demetra K Show. You can tune in to Demetra K on Facebook Live, 3 p.m. Los Angeles Standard Time, Pacific Standard Time. Um, before uh, I continue on to uh, the next topic, I want to give a big shout out to my niece. My niece recently graduated uh, CNA school and uh it's been a long time coming she seems to have gotten her head on straight and you know but uh she's always been a type of medical type person but it's just a matter when she's going to do it but all the graduates that graduated up there in um uh, beaumont california congratulations to you guys uh, again i'm i'm very very proud of my niece and uh you know more power to you uh finals this week for a lot of you guys that are in school and college you guys good luck I'm in also finals. I have two more finals this week. I have to maintain a, a minimum of a C average if I want to get paid. And, uh, of course, I'm going to do that because I do play the numbers game. And Demetra uh, will definitely uh, sign off and tell you uh, I am about my business when it comes to that. So, excuse me, you know, so, so a lot of things going on. Um, <clears throat> from what I hear, the Dallas Cowboys uh, won their game today. That's what I hear. I haven't been watching the game, but, you know, because we are still boycotting the NFL because Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick does not have a job 
as of yet. So um, one of the things that I, I really want to talk about is, and nobody seems to be talking about it, is the black wealth gap here in America. There is going to be a black wealth gap within 13 years, really 12, starting next month. We're down to 12 years where the black wealth will be zero. We, as black people, need to be up in arms and alarmed. If we have no wealth in this country, we're not even second-class citizens. That puts us down to fourth. Why aren't people talking about this stuff? Why aren't these candidates talking about this stuff? Uh, billionaire Tom Steyer, Steyer, he's running for president, he is talking about um, addressing you know, reparations. And it's funny how, if you guys listen to Professor Black Truth, he's on YouTube, great channel, guy really talks some uh, really stuff. He's the guy that actually started talking about cut the check, cut the check. Very simple message. Basically, what he's saying in that message is when you, when you gave reparations to the Asians, the Japanese Americans, there was no talk about uh, this or that. We'll give you a free, we'll wipe your debt away. We'll do this, we'll do that. You cut the check. You're giving reparations to Jews. I don't know why. We didn't do anything to them, the America as a whole. We didn't do anything to them. You cut the check. You cut the check for this. You cut the check for that you cut the check. But when it comes to black people, you don't want to cut the check. And if you guys have been following the uh, political system right now, Tom Steyer was in a meeting and he had said that he had heard that, that term. And he says, yes, absolutely. We need to cut the check, but we need to talk about uh, how to do that, how to get there. What the fuck do you mean how to get there? No, there's nothing else to talk about. Cut the check. Trillions. We're talking minimum. $17 trillion minimum. That's just the, to me to start $17 trillion. Why do they always want to talk when it comes to black people and black issues? Kamala Harris dropped out of the race. You got Cory Booker left and now they're saying there's no black uh, people on the stage. Well, was there black people before? Was there anybody championing a black agenda? No. But it was the new black media that destroyed Kamala. She had way more money than, uh, I'd say, all but two or three, the, the, the billionaires that are on there now, of the candidates that are running. And she dropped out. She was a very, very bad candidate. That's just the bottom line uh, when it comes to Miss Kamala Harris. She cannot run with the record that she had. And um, yeah, but uh, Tom Steyer, uh, Steyer says, how do we get there when it comes to cutting the check is we should look to South Africa. What a coincidence. Demetra K and I recently have come back from South Africa. And in South Africa, there was a Truth and Consequences Commission. And what that commission basically did was it said in conjunction with the release of Nelson Mandela, that was one of the agreements to let him out and take over and all that other hula hula. But what that truth and uh, consequences thing said basically was people that murdered and lied and killed and all the bad stuff that you did, confess your sins and you can go. That's it. You can go. Yeah, all these niggers are dead and stuff like that. But you know what? You've confessed your sins and you can go. Apartheid in South Africa has been over officially over 25 years. The country is not doing as well as it should. 25 years later, the Afrikaners, the white people, still own 93% of all of the wealth. Black leadership has enriched themselves and it doesn't, they don't really care about what's going on with the, the regular people. But Tom Steyer says that's the approach we should take, a truth and consequences reconciliation. Now, Mr. Steyer, how the fuck does that get us to cutting the check? 
That's what I want to know. There's nothing else to talk about. We know history. We know what has been done. We know who's killed who. We know all of that stuff. Cut the check. That's, there's nothing else to talk about. Cut the check. Now, the opportunities given to Mr. Steyer to be a billionaire, Mike Bloomberg to be a billionaire, not a millionaire, billionaire, um, Bill Gates, all these other people, the advantages that, they, that, that they've had, these people are businessmen. I don't have to sit with you for months, weeks, days, and hours. You know, you guys know finance. To talk about money, here are the numbers. This is what we need. Cut the check. Sir, black wealth is going to be zero in 12 years. What other numbers do you need? Oh, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, d d we'll dismiss your student loans. That's a bunch of bullshit, okay? Let me tell you guys. The student loan thing and everybody going to school, I'm not saying you shouldn't go to school. What I'm saying is we have to start being realistic as a people. Not all of us are academia. Not all of us are academia. To me, the only people I see working are the people that can work with their hands. Beauticians, construction, auto mechanics, aircraft mechanics. These people are still working. But the people that I know that have degrees, you're competing with everybody else to get the same degree. And we know we're at the bottom of the pile. New Black Media is the one letting you guys know what's happening. If you guys do not believe what I'm telling you about Black Wealth, get on the internet, Google it. Black Wealth will be zero. Then what are we going to do? Then what are we going to do? Where are these champions of... Black people. What's the point of the Black Caucus if they're going to champion somebody else's cause? There's a Hispanic Caucus in Congress. I never see them on TV. I just see us caping for them. Where's, where's the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce? Nancy, Pol I mean, the Democrats, if you guys have been on my Facebook page, um, I put up a caption where you see Nancy Pelosi and all of these Democrats, prominent ones, Aunt Maxine, all these people that are in there, and they have a sign talking about DACA and how they support DACA or support DACA or something like that. And it just, it just made me wonder, we can't even get an agenda specifically for us. You cannot, the wealth gap. How do you close a wealth gap if everybody gets the same thing? We are historically and factually behind everybody. The average, they say the average black family's wealth is $15,000. What's the poverty wealth in the United States? $15,000 about, give or take. $15,000. We are right there. Poverty. The majority of us. If everybody else gets $10,000, the same as we get $10,000, how does that close the wealth gap? It doesn't. We're still behind. One of the biggest mistakes Kamala Harris made was in that interview where she said, I'm specifically not going to do anything for black people. No! No, I'm not going to do that. Well, we got to find another candidate. The only candidate that is basically using numbers and seems to be the only one that is, he's not championing our issue, but he understands the issue is Andrew Yang. He's talking about that freedom dividend. A thousand dollars would help me out and help a lot of people that I know out. He's the one that, that even gave the number of black wealth in so many years. But nobody can vote for Andrew Yang. Isn't that funny? An Asian guy knows more about the black agenda and what the black people need than the black candidates and the people of color candidates. People say, well, Donovan, you know, you, you, you kind of like Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah, I like the way she, she shanked Kamala. I like that. But you got to understand, uh, Tulsi Gabbard is in the army, so that is my uh, sister in arms. And I'm going to support my fellow sister in arms because... We've had these presidents who've never served. Oh, George Bush served. No, the fuck he didn't. 
George W. Bush enlisted in the Air National Guard and he was never seen there. That's why he never released his, uh, his record and his attendance record and all that other stuff. So don't give me that. That was his way to avoid the Vietnam War. We've had these coward type presidents. And like I said, if you don't want to serve, that's fine. I don't, it doesn't bother me that you don't serve. That's however you get out of it is however you get out of it. But these forever wars that we're in, who primarily are the ones that are going? Black people. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of getting sick and tired of the Democratic Party taking my vote for granted. Well, look at these guys. You ain't got much to, you know, you know whoever the, our nominee is, you got to vote for them no matter what. Why? Why? Why do I have to vote for them? Well, you know, uh, you can't get Trump back in there. You're not going to scare me with that. I'm going to get Trump, you know, uh, you know. As fucked up as Trump is, and excuse my language, you guys, I, I just get a little amped up when I'm, you know, talking about these uh, type issues. As messed up as Trump is, um, I think his administration has funded more HBCUs. But there's so little HBCUs, I'm like, how does that really help black people? But at least he did it. He's released a lot of black people out of uh, prisons, and he's looking at Prison Reform Act. He signed that act. Hmm. Let's do some comparison. Joe Biden affected more black families negatively, negatively bleh, than any other candidate that's up there right now. Now, in California, Kamala Harris just destroyed people, not, not just men, women as well, single mothers, you name it. She did it here in California. So she's gone now. Pete Buttigieg, that guy... He can't even control his own city. Fired the first black police chief there. There was another shooting there and he had no way, way to address it. Very, very sad. Very, very sad. And he's going to go around to these churches and say, well, you know, I had no idea that the, uh, you know, the racism and stuff was like this out of control. What the hell do you think black people have been talking about for years, years now? You just figured it out? I was uh, out and about. Whenever I go out and about, you know, like like you go to these stores now and, you know, these corporations are so big in trying to save money. They don't want to buy stamps anymore and mail you your bill. So they want you to do it. I'm not an employee of the company, but they want you to do it yourself online. And then if you don't take the paperless option, they force it on you anyway, right? So now you go into these stores and... They give you the option, and they're slowly trying to, to, to phase that out. Oh, do you have an email? We can email you, you your receipt. I'm a black man. I'm a black man. You expect me to walk out of this store without a receipt? You're kidding. <laughs> You're kidding. What world do you live in? You got to be kidding. Do I want it emailed to me? Are you kidding? So this is where we're at, people. This is where we're at. And um, as a black person, it's not getting any better. When our wealth goes to zero, we will no longer be first class citizens. We will no longer be second class citizens. We will be fourth class citizens because we have nothing to contribute. We give away 1.3 trillion dollars of our money every year. We are the foundation. Are you guys not tired of other peoples coming to this country and then stepping on us and using the programs that our ancestors fought for to their advantage? Why is it that that person who came from somewhere in Southeast Asia gets a 3% loan and I get 16. Why don't we ask these questions? When are we going to stop voting for these Maxine Water type people who don't do anything for us? Wasn't it the Democratic Party that helped usher and destroy the black family saying, okay, black woman, you could uh, do whatever you want to do. 
You just got to get rid of this man out of your house. You don't need no man. And it's so sad that a lot of black women bought into that. And they're still buying into that. I have a niece right now that buys into that. There's nothing wrong with being married or having, you know, that person. Black woman, we need you just as much as you need us. I get so sick and tired of these black women running down black men. And then when you ask them what happened, it's like, well, he ain't acting right. Well, you can't control him. He's a man. Well, why can't women be in charge? You can be in charge. When it's something that is of yours to be in charge of, but a man is going to be a man. You can't make that man be a father. You just can't. He's got to be the best father or the man that he knows how to be and how he was trained. That's why, ladies, when you see these young men out here acting up so emotional and, and whatever and lacking responsibilities, where do you think they learn that from? Obviously not the father because he's locked up somewhere or he's jilted his responsibilities. But that doesn't make you as the mother and the first teacher absent from teaching them the right way. You don't have a brother. You don't have a male cousin. Somebody positive to mentor this young man. I'm sure you do. So we can't keep using these excuses, especially when the clock is ticking. We have 12 years. Then what are you going to do? Well, we'll give you guys free education. Free education isn't going to help us. Do you guys realize that the value of sitting down and talking to a billionaire or a successful person doesn't take years? It might take a few hours. Sean Puffy Combs interned for, you know, I, I forgot, MTV or whatever. That's how he technically got to start. Then he jumped over to Uptown Records or whatever and so on, so on, so forth. How long did he do that before he learned and unlocked the secrets of to be successful? I mean, this is all a game. You know, and I don't understand why people haven't figured it out yet. You got your Joy Reads out there now talking about bots and, you know, all this other stuff. Isn't it funny how she, she never talks about that when it comes to Hillary Clinton? You know, oh, the Kamala Harris campaign was, you know, done by, who are you to tell us who we should vote for and expose? Do you guys actually believe this impeachment thing affects you in any way, especially if you're a black person? It's just a distraction. It doesn't mean anything. Should they do their job? Absolutely. Put this guy in check. There's nothing that's going to eat Trump up more than be in the history books as the third impeached president. Is he going to be um, acquitted in the Senate? Of course. Of course. Is he going to win re-election? Of course. But why is he going to win re-election? Think about that. Why is he going to win, win re-election? Look at the candidates that are up there. Everything is being done to deny Bernie Sanders the nomination. Everything is being done. They are going to do, the Democrats, dummy crats as I call them, are going to do everything possible to go to the second ballot and nominate, use the superdelegates to nominate who they want. Your vote's going to be discarded completely. And then that candidate doesn't have a chance in hell against Donald Trump. Even if that candidate candidate gets 12 million votes more than Donald Trump because he's going to control the um, House of uh, the, the Electorate, the, the Electoral College. That's the game that, that we're in. So now they're going to try to scare you and say, oh, well, we need that black vote and stuff like this. And, you know, and I, I, I tell Demetra this all the time. Black women love to be mentally masturbated. And she hates that. And mentally masturbated, what I'm saying is black women love to be complimented. They love to be, we're the backbone of the Democratic Party. I would 
wouldn't be so quick to be so proud of that if you look at the record of the Democratic Party. Now, what I'm saying, am I saying join the Republican Party? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that your vote is a transaction. You should get something for your vote. I'm tired of uh, giving my vote away for nothing. And that's what the Democrats expect. And then when they lose, oh, not enough black people showed up. 80% of black people voted for uh, uh, Hillary Clinton. 80% of black people voted for her. And they have the nerve to blame us for the loss. Now, I didn't vote for her. And I didn't vote for um, Trump either. But your vote is a transaction. And you should get something for that vote. So uh, we just have to do better, people. And we need to be in a mode of panic. Well, not necessarily panic, but in a mode of, mode of distress. We have to start relying on ourselves because these people are not doing it. And if we do have people like Maxine Waters up there, we need to start voting them out. They need to be primaried. Primaried out of there. Simple as that. So um, it's just... It's just a sad situation that we are constantly, constantly in. And, and aren't you guys tired of it? No, it, it's, it just, it's just sad. It's just sad all around. And um, if we don't do better and realize that the clock is ticking, we're, we're definitely going to lose. We're definitely going to lose. But uh, tell me what you guys think about this topic. You know, give you you know give us your feedback, and if you guys got any other topics you guys want to talk about, uh, let us know. Here in Southern California, it is pretty cold. It was kind of hot today. Well, not hot, but it was sunny. Uh, uh, when it's uh, raining and stuff, people out here just lose their minds when it rains. Even if it drizzles, they just they just go nuts, and it's 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 just incredible. It's just incredible. But. Um, Demetri K will be back next week. You guys don't worry about that. Um, again, um, executive producer Al Jackson came out. And if you guys have never met Al, I wish uh, he would. He left today to go back to Houston, by the way. But uh, the man is a genius when it comes to comedy. The man needs to start. And I, I'm sure he just writes jokes down on a constant basis. This man needs to be in Hollywood writing a script and a uh, comedy show and all that other good stuff. But uh, I want to kind of transition real quick before we go. we got about seven, eight minutes to go. <sighs> Star Wars. How the, the rise of Skywalker. All the leaks are out there and, you know, it's been spoiled for a lot of people. Um, the minute I saw The Force Awakens personally, I said, what is this that I'm watching? This looks like a remake of the, A New Hope. And it's just been going downhill for that ever since. And, um, you know, and that's another thing you, you got to think about, escapism. There is more escapism now than there was in the 1930s. And that's because when the stock market crashed to keep people's minds off of a revolution, you had your Shirley Temples, you had your Fred Astaire's, you know, and you know you're getting old when... Um, you, you talk about these icons of Hollywood and these young people are like, who? What? I will say Dr. J, Julius Irving. Nobody, these young kids don't even know, know what I'm talking about. They don't even know what I'm talking about. You know, and speaking of Julius Irving, as you guys know, I, I do coach uh, recreational basketball here at the city of Myrtle Valley. It's one of, it's one of the many ways that I, I give back to the community and I got a decent basketball team now. Um, the funny thing was, uh, one of the moms, you know, we all love our sons and daughters and stuff, and she just thinks her son is just awesome. And she's a good mom, don't get me wrong. And she's like, oh, well, you know, my son doesn't need to learn fundamentals. This is rec. This is here for them to have fun. So being the wily person I, I am, the next practice, I made sure to uh, expose her son, you know, for some of the flaws that he, that he has. I mean, he's only 11 years old right now. You know, let him have some fun. Let him learn what he can learn. And, you know, I'm just going to fix little things because if he goes to the next level, those coaches won't have to work on that. 
but you pick up what you can pick up. But at the end of the day, let them have some fun. So a lot of you moms out there, I mean, you guys go, you guys go full burn for, for your sons and daughters. And I know you want them to make it and then buy mama a house and all that other good stuff. But don't you think that's a lot of pressure to put on a kid, that burden of, oh, I got to take care of my mama. You know, I got to make it. I, I honestly believe it, it puts a psych on them because when they don't make it, then they feel like a failure. And then they, they turn to other means of coping with that failure. So, you know, moms, dads out there, you know, let them be kids. Just let them be kids for now. You know, when they're ready and they're in high school, junior high school, and they start playing a little bit more organized where the rules are a little bit more rigid and they've got to be disciplined. That's when you know, you know, if, if the child is really ready to uh, be serious about that commitment. But in the meantime, let them be kids. And my style of coaching is I, I always use my military background and I reinforce uh, what I'm coaching. You know, it's kind of hard when you only got an hour. An hour to me is not really a lot. But in that hour, I slam a lot into them and I just keep them reinforcing. And I'm very, very successful with the kids that are very shy and stuff. And I try to bring that out. And I, I would tell the story of my one kid. His name is Diego. This kid had big glasses, very shy, didn't know anything about basketball. I mean, he was like just out there like a a tree. He didn't, he didn't know what to do. And no, was he going to be a scorer? Not right now. So I told him, I said, Diego, I'm going to make you a defensive machine. Because that's something I knew he could do. Now, two cycles later... This kid is totally unidentifiable from where he was. Outgoing a little bit. He's aggressive. He knows how to get the D going. I mean, he just loves it because that's what he brings to the team. And I told him, I said, man, you're going to get better and better and better. And as he gets stronger and older, he's definitely going to learn how to shoot. And, you know, and he's shooting now, but I'm just saying he's really going to get into it. But his defense is solid. So let's not try to put pressure on these kids and, and make them grow up as faster than they need to grow up. Also on my page, if you guys have looked, um, we have a massive homeless problem and mental illness in L.A. County. Anytime you come to Los Angeles now, you will see tents everywhere. And it is a major epidemic that is spreading across the United States with the lack of housing, affordable housing. There's plenty of houses, but people just can't afford them. So we got to start uh, thinking about solving that issue. On any given day in L.A., you will see a person walking in the middle of the street, half naked, all naked. I mean, it's unbelievable. So that's why when I always say the zombie apocalypse, it's here. It's here. And we've got and our politicians are doing nothing about it. They've got money for wars, but can't feed the poor. But, you know, what's going on? Endless wars. Where are these Democrats putting a stop to that? Where is any pilot? Now these endless wars are normal. Do you guys realize that you've got people in the military now that weren't even born when 9-11 happened? And they're fighting these wars right now. And we think it's normal. Am I going to go back to Afghanistan and fight? No, I'm too old now. They're not going to ask me to go, but they're going to ask your, your children to go. So we need to get candidates in there that aren't in there for themselves, but they're in there to represent you and get stuff done. You can't ask somebody who was raised in the 1960s in a generation fail, that's what I call them, generation fail, to come up with new ideas. They don't have any. We need progressive Republicans, progressive Democrats, whatever you want to call it. We actually need more parties in this country versus this two-party system because both of these parties are the same party, the ruling party. This is all a game. Follow the money and you will find that these parties get their money from the same donors. But anyway, this has been a short episode of the Demetri K Show. We didn't want to leave you guys out there hanging. I wanted to get this up as you know quickly as possible and uh, do what we got to do. I'm Donovan Sadiq. Please join me on my show on Fridays. Don't believe the hype. We talk about free flow, flow Friday, anything you want to talk about, and we try to get it out there. I'm more of a political person and, and get stuff, you know, uh, numbers. I'm, I'm pretty much into the numbers. But I'm telling you guys, uh, it's wet out there. It's cold out there. Bundle up. Merry Christmas. I do say Merry Christmas. Um, and, you know, don't go above your means. Remember, black wealth 
is going to be zero in 12 years. So instead of getting kid that $400 place in that you can't afford, just it's the thought that matters. Buy some stocks. Later.